the school, which is that's a very large group of kids. Uh, I don't forget how many. It's unbelievable. And so uh, we're in there, and uh, there's still a couple of doors we really would like to see open. So keep praying. The, the, and so for those of you who don't know how to pray, what it is is uh, Dave Corn comes in, and we try to go into the local public schools. And he will do a little short program. He has some wonderful programs that he knows he can do without the principal getting in trouble. Uh, you know, we're not trying to get the school system sued. He know he can talk about bullying, obedience, and he does a show, and the kids love it. He's amazing. And then we will hand out tickets so they can come see a full show right here at New Life. And uh, we had overflow crowds last time, and so that's what we're praying for. Is if we get into a lot, all the schools in the area. By the way, we got in Margaret Elementary for the first time, and so there are some doors opening, but. Uh, we want to get in St. Clair County High School lunchroom during the lunch is really what we'd like to do there. And we, he don't even have to do a show. He'll go table to table. And uh, we, then we just hand out the tickets. But uh, the Lord's opening doors, and so keep praying. And then get closer, we'll probably even have some special prayer meetings because, you know, we can get a crowd. That's really not what it's about. We want to see souls saved. And Brother Dave gives the gospel in just an incredible way, and we'll be prepared to uh, have a team of people ready to deal with folks that respond. And so we're going to pray that the Holy Spirit will be working. And, of course, Brother Dave will be preaching to us uh, on that Sunday for sure, and so uh, that will be awesome right there. He's a great, great uh, speaker. All right, a lot to pray about. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the opportunity to assemble tonight. We thank you for the boys and girls that we saw as we walked in tonight. We pray for that ministry downstairs. Lord, it, it's nights of struggle, but there's also just great blessings attached to that. I heard testimonies last night of how uh, some children just are, as soon as the teacher starts teaching, they just lock in and they're so uh, eager to to hear and so that's just what it's all about Lord we thank you for our teachers that have great skill bless them tonight as they teach the Word of God and teach these Bible stories pray for Matt Lord and all those working with the youth down there right now we pray Lord as they minister Lord, their only hope is the Lord Jesus we pray for these that are believers that they'll grow in you through that ministry we Lord, we got a lot of sick people, very sick, in the hospital, surgeries, and Lord, just uh, some severe diagnosis on some, and Lord, we're so thankful we have you to turn to, and Lord, we know that uh, we are thankful for doctors, we're thankful for medicine, but Lord, we know you provide the healing, and Lord, we're just asking you on behalf of all these that were called out tonight, and there's others on the list we didn't talk about, you know who they are, you know the needs, Lord, I pray for them. And all these sick, we pray for our shut-ins, especially the ones that uh, can't be with us right now because of sicknesses. And, Lord, we miss them, and I pray they'll be encouraged, and I pray for healing for them also, Lord. And I pray you'll bless our time as we look into the Word of God tonight. May we all be encouraged. In Jesus' name, amen. Page 243. 243. <clears throat> I am resolved no longer to linger, charmed by the world's delight. Things that are higher, things that are nobler, these have a lure my side. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. I am resolved to go to the Savior, leaving my sin and strife. He is the 
the true one, he is the just one, he hath the words of life. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. Jesus, greatest, highest, I will come to thee. On the last. I am resolved to enter the kingdom, leaving the paths of sin. Friends may oppose me, foes may beset me, still will I enter in. I will hasten to him, hasten so glad and free. I will come to thee. Well, good evening, everyone. I got a big stack of updates for you tonight. We'll start off with the Heaton family serving the people of the United Kingdom. Dear friends and fellow laborers, we're rejoicing to recount what we've seen over the last few months from answers to prayers opportunities to minister and provision. We praise the Lord for what he's doing here. The Crown Christian Heritage Trust held regional youth rallies across England. We were thankful to have attended the North Rally held at Breck Road Baptist Church in Liverpool. We had seven teenagers and three adults come from our church. We'd like to thank you all for praying and some for giving toward the purchase of a minibus for Edward Street. In November, God provided the funds and a bus for us to acquire and since uh, We've been giving lifts to services and various events. We're praying specifically that we'll begin a pickup route for the Sunday school children in the local area. It was such a blessing to have a minibus dedication with the church and Sunday school as we prayed God would use this vehicle to bring many to hear the gospel. The month of December was busy with outreach for the Christmas gatherings. <clears throat> the ladies of Edward Street were able to travel down to Breck Road Baptist Church for their annual Christmas ladies gathering. This was a special time to spend with one another as we remember the Savior's birth. We were encouraged to see how the Lord worked and brought many in for our carol service. Our Sunday school children, 15 in total, sang in the service, bringing many family members to come in and hear the gospel message. 91 people in total were in attendance and over a third of those were connected with the Sunday school. It was amazing to, to, uh, to meet and speak to the family members of these children. We pray we were given more opportunities to witness to them on Christmas morning. It was special to have so many from the local area come in. We have four Sunday school children come in with their parents, and it's been lovely to have several parents of Sunday school children begin coming to the weekly church services. On New Year's Day, we had a Thanksgiving service. It was, wonder it was a wonderful time to reflect on what God had done and praise him for it. We enjoyed singing hymns and sharing the blessings from the last several months, to name a few. Beginning out week, uh, weekly outreach in the city center and on the doors, outreach at Appleby Horse Fair, Carlisle Gospel Tent Mission, opening service of Edward Street Baptist Church, restarting the Sunday school, beginning the youth rally, souls being saved, purchasing of the minibus and updates to the church building, as signs and everything. Many visitors came to our services, uh, installation of a live stream, safe delivery of our son, provisions of a home in Carlisle and the beginning of the Mums and Tots ministry. Our hearts are full to think back on all these blessings from the past year and answers to prayers. Our God's been so gracious to work in such a way here in Carlisle. We want to thank you all for your investment of prayers and finances for the ministry taking place in this part of the world. We rejoice at what God's done and what he will do next year. We are pleased to announce that we've begun, uh, begun a Mums and Tots and have seen several moms and their children come into the church of these moms, one in particular shared that after the unexpected loss of her grandmother, she purchased a Bible and began reading it. She shared that she did not grow up in a religious home, but that the word had given her such peace. She attended a Sunday morning service this past week and expressed her enjoyment of the service and regrets that she hadn't come sooner. We're praying that this lady, along with many others, will come to know the Savior. At the beginning of this year, Jonathan, along with a couple others from the trust attended and preached at a Bible conference in New Zealand and we we're so thankful for the opportunity and the invitation to go it was incredible to see the Lord's work and the very 
apparent need for the gospel, please pray for the work of the gospel and for the laborers to be sent to the land of the long white cloud, New Zealand. Thank you for your love, prayers, and faithful support as we honor uh, labor for the Lord in the UK, in Christ, the Heaton family. I'm going to read them all and we'll pray uh, for all together. I've got an update from Brother Dave Turner in the Gulf Coast Prison Ministry, completely different part of the world here. It says, uh, dear friends, for the past few years, we've been allowed to give out goodies and toiletries by way of ticket drawing in several jails and prisons. These covetous gifts are not only rare, but are often not permitted at all in lockup or the people who are in the segregation sections of a prison. After displaying all of the small gift bags for all to see prior to preaching, I leave a large giant print Bible in the satchel as a secret gift for any prize winner willing to trade his goodies for the much more valuable gift, in my opinion, which is not seen. Most of the time, no one makes a sacrifice, so we walk out with the $50 Bible in tow. No one is the wiser. Last week, or to our great surprise, the very first ticket winner anxiously made the swap. And here's a letter that uh, he sent us. Dear Gulf Coast Prison Ministry men, last week two came to our cell block in segregation. One was from Tennessee, the other one was from Florida. They gave us tickets and had several drawings to win gifts, one of which was a giant, giant print Bible. Please tell them that I had just arrived that day from another prison and they lost my Bible in the transfer. I was born again five years ago and my life was never the same. My most prized possession was my Bible and it was gone. Miraculously, I won the first drawing and immediately chose that beautiful Bible. It was an answer to prayer beyond belief. Tell those two soldiers of the cross, thank you. And he replied, Dear Clyde, thank you for your great testimony. I'm the older, shorter, but smarter preacher from Alabama. The other taller, somewhat younger, but slower preacher was from uh, was the Tennessee hillbilly. You may thank the Lord and his gracious people who support us for your answer to prayer. We rejoice with you and we hope that you enjoy your first book from Prison Bible School. And um, he goes on to talk about, here we go. Um, here's the prison and jail report. Butler County Jail, uh, one saved. Northeast Tennessee, two saved. Uh, LCI, Ohio, two saved. Marion, Virginia, two saved. St. Clair, Alabama, 19 saved, 26 in total. And they're thankful to report that in 2022, 204 people were saved through this ministry, thanks to the combined efforts of our team. Uh, any church that wants us to come by and report, please call me, Soldier for Christ, Dr. Dave Turner, director. And finally, I don't know who gets uh, Brother Ethan Lee Croy's email update. But uh, I've got the print version here, and I just read this last week. It says, uh, Ethan Lecroy, an exciting year ahead. Dear friends and partners in ministry, I hope you're doing well. As I write this letter, we are eagerly awaiting the arrival of our fourth child, Noah Luke. He's doing a few short weeks. We're so excited and trying to quickly prepare for his arrival. Because of this, we're staying close to home, but the Lord has been faithful to give us ministry opportunities. Early 2020, 2023, we traveled to Lake Mary, Florida in January to preach for the folks at Countryside Baptist Church. The Lord gave us a great Sunday. It was so exciting to uh, encourage this growing church to strive together for the gospel. The Lord also allowed me to preach a chapel at a Christian school close to home called Mount Pleasant Christian School. I preached in a church as well on Sunday. The Lord gave us uh, great meetings in both services. This church has a heart for young people and the Lord led me to preach to them on reaching the next generation. Pastor Boatman and the folks are uh, going to great lengths to do exactly that. I love this ministry. I was also able to preach at a couple of special Valentine's service, one at a uh, church nearby called Red Hill Baptist Church, and the other right here at our home church. Pastor asked me to run a special family night for fun, for new life, and we had a great fun doing it. Such a joy to serve the Lord. I'm excited to share with you uh, Doors of opportunity that the Lord has already opened for 2023. We'll be in several new churches and ministries and even uh, at least one new state and one new country. I love getting to see what the Lord is doing in uh, different parts of the world. Our God is on the move. God's been faithfully opening doors and we, be we believe, excuse me, he'll continue to do the same. At this point, uh, he gives a long schedule. He's looks like he's, uh, he's gonna be a busy man this coming year. Um, 
but you're a part of this. He says, I fully believe that as we travel and preach, you're part of what the Lord is doing. We're laborers together as you pray and give. The Lord opens doors and works in hearts. We can't do it without you. Souls are saved and lives are changed through the power of the word of God. And the Spirit's moving, but preachers are sent and prayers are heard and answered because faithful believers give and pray. We need you more than... Uh, more than ever in the year ahead uh, to labor alongside us. We believe the Lord wants to do even greater things in the days ahead. So please let us know if we can be a help to you in any way as you uh, can see there are plenty of openings in the schedule and we'd love to be a help to you if the Lord leads in a way. We still have room on our uh, MIT trips and would love for many more to come as we travel to both Panama and South Africa this year. We hope uh, if we can ever pray for you or just have a conversation to be a help, please reach out. We love. Love you and look forward to seeing many of you throughout the year. May the Lord richly bless you as you faithfully serve him in Christ, the Lee Croix. Well, let's pray. Heavenly Father, Lord, I thank you for these missionary families, Lord. I just thank you for, for the Heatons, Lord, just to reach out to the people in UK. And Lord, I pray you bless their ministry, Lord. Please just meet their needs. And Lord, just give them, give them open hearts, Lord, that are just eager to hear from your word, Lord. And I pray for... Uh, just a, a rich harvest there in the UK, Lord. And Lord, I thank you for Brother Turner, who goes to the mission field that not many people want to go to, Lord. But I pray that he answered, he answered the call. I thank you, Lord, that he answered the call. And thank you for the um, 204 that were saved this past year. And Lord, I pray you just strengthen Brother Turner and help him to continue to reach those that need you the most, Lord. And Lord, as we uh, prepare for the arrival of baby Noah Luke for the Lee Croix, Lord. I, I just pray that, Lord, you just keep him healthy, give him a, a safe delivery and uh, bring him home. And um, Lord, please, please just help uh, Brother Ethan reach out uh, to all these churches and uh, just help those uh, lost souls get saved just through your word, Lord. We love you and ask all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Start changing, put numbers on you. Hold to his unchanging hand. No? Okay. What she rules. He keeps me singing, too fit. Die within my heart a melody. Jesus whispers sweet and low, fear not I am with thee, peace be still, in all of life's ebb and flow. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every longing, keeps me singing as I go. All my life was wrecked by sin and strife. This for fear my heart with pain. Jesus swept across the broken strings, fair my roaming heart again. Jesus, 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 sweetest name I know, fills my every Keeps me singing as I go on the last. Soon he's coming back to welcome me far beyond the starry sky. I shall wing my flight to worlds unknown. I shall reign with him on high. Jesus, Jesus, Jesus. Sweetest name I know Fills my every longing Keeps me singing as I go Oh, I asked in this, but I think what did it is I got this problem with my breathing, so That's the reason why I'm putting some verses out when I can All right, open your Bibles to 2 Samuel 
chapter 10. I got to talk to Brother Turner, speaking of his letter. Uh, he ended up staying Monday night, had a busy day, got caught in a traffic jam, and it was just getting late, and he called and wanted to make sure the room was still available. I'm like, it's, only, it's yours. It's got your name on it. <laughs> so anyway, he was here Monday night again, and anyway, he told me uh, seven got saved at St. Clair Monday. And they were in the worst. He said that's the worst place he's ever been. It's called the bullpen. And he said they're just screaming and yelling before you ever get there. You know, I mean, they're just out of control. He said they set those gift bags out and do the drawing. He said it's just quiet. They listen. Once they listen, they hear the gospel. And so seven got saved uh, Monday. So praise the Lord. All right, still in uh, studying the life of David, we went through 1 Samuel and we decided to just transition on into 2 Samuel as uh, we now we see David the king. And so uh, he's already gone to the throne now. Uh, and so we've seen a shepherd become a king. We've seen a young boy grow up to be a man. And we also uh, understand that David is a man, described as a man after God's own heart. And he was a man that God can use. And so remember, we, when we study great men like David, we still want to focus on God. And so the, a man that God can use, God is still the instrument, but he does use people in this world. And I'm thankful for that. God has used people in my life, but I understand it was God working through them. And so last week we left off with the beautiful story of David and Mephibosheth. And uh, that was uh, just kind of showed you the heart of David as he sought out someone from Saul's family that he could show kindness to. And I think a lot of that had to do with he remembered that great friend he had uh, in Jonathan. And so that was a beautiful story. And we said, you know, that's not unlike what the Lord Jesus has done for us. And then David sought out the remaining kin of Saul and uh, did that. So we go into chapter 10 uh, tonight. And point number one, we see great victory. In chapter 10, we see uh, really what David is most known for as king is he was a warrior king. And God used him to push the borders of Israel to its greatest extent. And uh, he uh, led Israel into some great victories. In verse 1 through 5 is an interesting story of a humiliation. Notice what it says. And it came to pass after this that the king of the children of Ammon died, and Hanan his son resided in his stead. And then said David, I will show kindness unto Hanan, the son of uh, Nahash, as his father showed kindness unto me. And David sent to comfort him by the hand of the servants of his father. And David's servants came into the land of the children of Ammon. And the princes of the children of Ammon said unto Hanan the, their lord, Thinkest thou that David doth honor thy father, that he has sent comforters unto thee? Hath not David rather sent his servants unto thee to search the city and to spy it out and to overthrow it? This is just another example of uh, there's multiple examples in the scriptures. You've got to be careful who's in your ear and get bad advice. And I want to be hanging around people that will encourage me and give me the truth. And so this king gets bad advice from the advisors. So what does he do? Verse 4, Wherefore Hanan took David's servants, shaved off one half of their beards. And, uh, that's uh, uh, part of their culture was to have facial hair. And it was uh, considered the right thing to do. And they shaved off half. And then they, he cut off their garments way up high there. Notice that in verse 4. And when they told it unto David, he sent to meet them because the men were greatly ashamed. And the king said, tarry at Jericho until your beards be grown and then return. They would have been so ashamed to come back to Israel. And so then, of course, that sets off David uh, to go to war with them. And so we see humiliation. Look at verse number six. And when, and when the children of Ammon saw that they stank before David, the children of Ammon sent and hired the Syrians. They said, oh, we're in trouble now. So we better get some help. And they go hire the Syrians, which sets off a war once again between Israel and these two enemies. And so in verse 7, And David heard it. He sent Joab and all the host of the mighty men. As you continue reading, you'll see that Joab has a brother named Abishai. And they divided their men into two groups and a two-pronged attack. 
and they uh, kind of made an agreement. If, if one of us get in trouble, the other's going to come and work it out. And so that was their uh, way of dealing with that. Well, that's not all that happened because we come down to verse number 17 and we see David gets involved. And when it was told David, he gathered all Israel together, passed over Jordan, came to Helam, and the Syrians set themselves in array against David and fought with him. And the Syrians fled before Israel, and David slew the men of 700 chariots of the Syrians, 40,000 horsemen, and smote Shobak, the captain of their host, who died there. So we see uh, great victory, and that uh, is God using David. David fighting, David leading, David victorious, and uh, that's what we see in chapter 10. But then, sadly, we have to move to the next chapter. In chapter number 11, I titled it Great Loss. It's great loss. There's a, there's a loss for the testimony of God. There's certainly a great loss for Israel. There's great loss for David. There's a great loss for David's family. And that loss was caused because of sin. And David really has two great sins in chapter 11. I just want to stop here and mention the fact that if the Bible was just stories made up to tell others and it was not true, then you would not take one of the greatest heroes of the Bible and give all the gory details of his great failure. Amen. The Bible is true, folks. Amen. And he tells us the good, and is not ashamed to tell us the bad. And even though David is described as a man after God's own heart, God doesn't whitewash it. He tells us the truth in his word about what this great man did and the great sin that he did. And it's not, uh, you know, today we're very good in America at uh, trying to make bad look a little better. You know, today we don't have adultery. We have a, I have an, in, somebody had an indiscretion. And it's still sin and God looks at the same. And so here we don't see it whitewashed. It is what it is. And uh, so I, I just wanted to mention that there. And so, you know, really there's only a couple of great heroes of the Bible that have not Got have recorded sins against them. Uh, Joseph would be one of those. We don't see anything recorded that Joseph had some major sin in his life. We know he wasn't perfect because there are no perfect men. And we know he was in the flesh and flesh is weak. And so, you know, whether it be a bad attitude or uh, whatever, he, he did sin, but it's not recorded for us. And then another one where in our school, the Bible, we did the book of Daniel last night in my survey class. And we mentioned the fact that there's really nothing written bad or negative or sinful about Daniel. And so that's just two, just at the top of my head that uh, we don't see that. But many of the other great heroes of the Bible, I mean, you look at Abraham, Father Abraham, but yet we know the Bible records his weakness and the fact that he went down to Egypt. And then he told a lie, or some might call it a half lie, but really is there a half lie, about his wife who he called his sister. And so, you know, he was not perfect. And he sinned. And Moses and, uh, you know, uh, all the great heroes of the Bible, you could probably find something there. And so the Bible's true. It tells us the truth about men. And men are flawed. But God is not, okay? And so David, uh, described by God as a man after God's own heart, and that same man fails in a very great and public manner here in chapter 11. Two great sins easily identified, and really you could say more than those two sins because there certainly was deceit. We know that God lying, covering up, all those things are sin, but certainly two great commandments are broken here by this man that is described as a man after God's own heart. And so what a shame that is to see that happen. And so God's name is involved and tarnished when we sin. It's a serious thing to go into sin, especially in a very public way. And so uh, don't you know that the, the, the media, the world, they, they would love to find out something about somebody in this church or, you know, or if, if a pastor... And we've seen the TV evangelists, anything like that. It's going to be exploited and it's going to be out there. And the name, the name of God is tarnished because of the deeds of men. God's done nothing wrong, but men have. And therefore, uh, it's, a, it's a serious thing. And so, you know, isn't it interesting? They sin and it's no problem. But you let someone like David sin, it's a big problem. 
uh, and you let a person that you think about in the workplace, I've seen it firsthand myself, and you've probably seen it, or they could they could uh, get away with anything, say anything, do have any act and brag about it, and it's okay. Nobody even raises an eyebrow. But if they think you did something, if you've identified as a Christian, they're like, what? You did what? And uh, that's just the nature of being set apart for Christ. And so it is a terrible thing when the king of Israel, the king that God chose, goes into sin. You know what? It's a, it's a terrible thing when anyone goes into sin. And so we need to be reminded of that as we study this chapter. And so David is such a tremendous example of all of us and how uh, we should love and serve God. And now all of a sudden in this chapter, we see this shocking darkness and this shocking failure on this great example to us. And so God, who is no respecter of persons, deals with David's sin the way he would deal with our sin. And so uh, he doesn't make it any easier on David because of who he is. God doesn't care if you're the king or the pauper. God looks at all of us the same. And so that is something else we need to remember as we study this chapter. So first of all, we see the first wicked sin there. The first wicked sin is adultery in verses 1 through 5. And it came to pass after the year was expired at the time when kings go forth to battle that David sent Joab... And his servants with him and all Israel, and they destroyed the children of Ammon and besieged Rabbah. But David tarried still at Jerusalem. There's a lot of commentators and a lot of people, and I tend to believe that David really should have been doing what he's always done, and that's go into battle. He had always been a warrior king, but now he's resting, he's at ease. We don't know if it was pride. We don't know if it was conceit. We don't know. Maybe he's just getting a little older, but... Uh, he certainly put himself in a bad place and certainly set himself up for temptation in the fact that he was not out there doing what he had always done. And so, uh, you know, now we know that the sin occurs here, but we also have to know that there was probably, we know something was going on in David's life and heart long before this, and he was not you know, worshiping like he had in the past. We've seen his great desire to have the ark at Jerusalem. We saw him lift up God's name in, in praise and write songs. And so something is wrong. And all those things sum up to the fact that he goes into great sin right here. Verse 2, it came to pass in an evening tide that David arose off from his bed, walked upon the roof of the king's house, and from the roof he saw a woman washing herself, and the woman was very beautiful to look upon. David sent and inquired after the woman, and one said, Is not this Bathsheba, the daughter of Eliam, the wife of Uriah the Hittite? And David sent messengers and took her, and she came in unto him, and he lay with her, and for she was purified from her uncleanness, and she returned unto her house. A great sin, and that sin is called adultery. And so it's not an indiscretion, it's not an affair, it is adultery, it is a commandment. Of God, and it's still a commandment today, and it was just as much sin then, and it's just as much sin today. And so, a wicked sin was committed by David. Now, I do wonder about Bathsheba and all this. Do you ever wonder about that? What part did she play? Doesn't matter. God focuses on David committed adultery. There is no excuse. No, more. maybe this was a great temptation. Maybe she did this on purpose. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The point is, God said, you committed adultery, and I'm going to hold you accountable. And so, men, we live in a very wicked day. There's no doubt. It is wicked. It is pornographic uh, all around us. It's, it's sad. So there was nakedness here, and there's a nakedness at Walmart. And, uh, you know, 70 degrees, so look out. And, uh, you know, and television and the billboards and uh, everything is just wickedness. But that is no excuse for sin. The Bible doesn't make an exception for the fact that David happened to be tempted here. We're all tempted. David was tempted, and he sinned. And you know what? There's no excuse for me today. There's no excuse for any man or any woman. Adultery is sin. And so the Bible doesn't tell us anything about her part in this except that uh, what happened. And so what a sad, sad indictment on David. He committed sin. And so we, the second 
part of this is the attempt to cover up the sin. In verse number 6, David sent to Joab saying, send me Uriah the Hittite. And so for time's sake, we'll just kind of summarize. I think most of us are familiar. He gets this soldier home. He thinks, well, I'm going to cover up my sin because he has, he has found out she is with child. Now the sin is a serious problem in the fact that I'm going to get caught in my sin. And so David is going to try to cover it up. And so uh, he is going to try to have Uriah come home so that maybe he can have an attempt to make it look like that maybe it's Uriah's child and not his child and cover up his sin. Well, that's lying. That's deceit. That's wicked in itself. But, you know, it doesn't stop there because we know what happened. Uriah re refused. He said, my fellow uh, soldiers are out there on the battlefield. Why should I be home with my wife, enjoying life? And so he refused to even go in to his wife. He slept at the at the doorway. And so one of the things I've always kind of think about is the think about the actions of David in this situation versus Uriah. Uriah is such a noble man, and and you know such a uprightness and a brave. And yet, here's David, <laughs> sinister, conniving, deceitful. And that is right the opposite of the David we've gotten to know as we've been doing this study. You know, and, and sin will do that to you, folks, and especially the attempt to cover sin. And so we see this downward spiral, and sin will take you farther than you ever wanted to go. David never wanted to go this far, for sure. And he has now gone into deceit. And now it'll take him even farther, as we know, and his plan didn't work, so he sends this man back to the battle. He sends instructions for Joab to put him up front and to see to it that he's in the heat of the battle. And there is no other way to color this except murder. He had this man killed. And look down in verse number 26. And when the wife Uriah heard that Uriah, her husband, was dead, she mourned for her husband. And so, uh, you know, she mourned. And what a terrible thing. But after the mourning, verse 27, David sent and fetched her to his house, and she became his wife, and bare him a son. But the thing that David had done displeased the Lord. Now, pretty much, David thought the nation as a whole, I'm sure there was probably somebody really close to the situation knew what all had happened. But the fact is, he thinks he's got it all covered up. But we see that he, didn't, he was not able to cover his sin with God because it very clearly David had displeased the Lord in verse number 27, which leads us to the third chapter tonight, point number three. We see great consequences. Great consequences in chapter 12. And so this is uh, something we need to pay special attention to. And the fact that uh, there are consequences for sin. And we need to keep that in our forefront, you know. We're all tempted. And we all in the flesh. And uh, take heed lest you fall. If you're sitting here tonight and say, well, I would never, then that's pride. And the pride leads to a fall. And uh, so, you know, I, I tell you, we, we need to keep in front of us their consequences for sin. And that serves as deterrent, Amen. And so we don't need to get into sin. So chapter 12, I title, Great Consequences. If any of the skeptics want to scoff and say David got away with his sins, then they must stop reading in chapter 11 because David, the farthest thing from the truth is David got away with his sins. The rest of David's life was marked from that moment on. And it was, uh, it was bad and it's terrible and it's sad. And... Uh, you know, here's the other lie of Satan, and this is, we need to watch out for this one, men, ladies. Well, it's just me, and it's just my sin, and I'm not hurting anyone else. Well, if you, as we study on here, David's entire family is affected. Another family is affected. A nation is affected by his sin. And I'm telling you, that's the way it works. Sin is going to affect those around us. And so uh, God deals with David just as he would deal with any of us. He didn't give him any favoritism because he's the king or he's his special chosen king. David paid dearly for his sin. So first of all, we see God's man in this chapter. 
And his name is Nathan. Verse number one, the Lord sent Nathan unto David. He came unto him and said unto him, and I love the way that he approached. I don't know if God said, this is the way I want you to do it, or if this man had the wisdom to do this. There were two men in one city, the one rich and the other poor. The rich man had exceeding many flocks and herds, but the poor man had nothing save one little lamb. And when he had bought and nursed it up, and it grew up together with him, with his children, it did eat of his own meat and drank of his own cup and lay in his own bosom was unto him as a daughter. And there came a traveler unto the rich man and he spared to take of his own flock and of his own herd to dress for the wayfaring man that was come unto him, but took the poor man's lamb and dressed it for the man that was come to him. And David's anger was greatly kindled against the man. Does this, does this remind you of something we find in the New Testament? Jesus warns us about looking for that little speck in your neighbor's eye while you have a moat. You've got a telephone pole in your eye, and here you are inspecting your neighbor. David is angry about a lamb, and here he has killed a man. He has committed adultery. David's anger is greatly kindled against the man. He said to Nathan, as the Lord liveth, the man that hath done this thing shall surely die. He shall restore the lamb fourfold because he did this thing and because he had no pity. Nathan said to David, thou art the man. I've always tried to envision that. This is the king, okay? You're not talking to Joe on the street. This is King David, mighty warrior, giant killer, a man that could destroy you in a, very easily or just tell somebody to do it. He had done that multiple times already. But this man had boldness, and I believe he took his finger right in his face. Thou art the man, thus saith the Lord God of Israel. I anointed thee king over Israel, and I delivered thee out of the hand of Saul. And I gave thee my, thy master's house and thy master's wives into thy bosom, and gave thee the house of Israel and of Judah. And if that had been too little, I would moreover have given unto thee such and such things. There, there was more coming. Wherefore hast thou despised the commandment of the Lord to do evil in his sight? Thou hast killed Uriah the Hittite with the sword and hast taken his wife to be thy wife and hast slain him with the sword of the children of Ammon. Oh, my goodness. Wickedness has been exposed. May we be reminded God knows. Man hides, man covers, man plots, man pretends. Man can make it look like everything's okay, but God knows, and you can't hide from God. And we need more men like Nathan. We need preachers like Nathan. We need evangelists like Nathan. Oh, we need some Nathans today to speak the truth and not just go with the flow because society's changing. God's word hadn't changed. And so he didn't whitewash it, did he? He just preached the truth there, and we need to do that. And then we see God's wrath in verses 10 through 14. Now, therefore, the sword shall never depart from thine house. The wrath of God is going to be poured out on David. Because thou hast despised me and hast taken the wife of Uriah the Hittite to be thy wife. And so both sins are exposed there. The murder of Uriah and now adultery. And God says, I am going to punish you. Thus saith the Lord, behold, I will raise up evil against thee out of thine own house. And I will take thy wives before thine eyes and give them unto thy neighbor. He shall lie with thy wives in the sight of this son. For thou didst it secretly, but I will do this thing before all of Israel and before the son. And so the first part of this certainly involves the family there. And so with the benefit of recorded history and God's word, we see the sword not departing. Sons killing sons. A great coup would take place, and we'll get to that. And uh, part of that coup is going to involve uh, Bathsheba's father. He's going to be involved. And so this thing doesn't go away, and it, it is a horrible, horrible thing that happens. And then God's not finished. Look at verse 14. Howbeit, because by this deed thou hast given great occasion to the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme, the child also that is born unto thee shall surely die. What a terrible thing sin is. 
Now listen, he does repent. Look at verse 13. David said unto Nathan, I have sinned against the Lord. That is repentance. Understanding, not covering up, exposing, and uncovering is really what a repent, agreeing with God about your sin. God's man says you've done this. He agrees with God about his sin. And we, uh, we have Psalm 51 that we will look into and see the proper way back to God is repentance. And he uh, pours that out in that psalm. And so he, I have sinned against the Lord. And Nathan said unto David, the Lord also hath put away thy sin, thou shalt not die. The punishment for murder was what? Death. And the punishment for adultery was also death under the law. It's because he repented. He did not die, but oh, the wrath of God was still upon him. Sin has consequences, and the consequences were great. The death of that innocent little baby, what a terrible thing to go through that. And knowing that this is why, what a terrible thing. And then he had no clue how bad it would be in his own family in the coming months and years as his own son's kill each other and his one son tries to kill him and take the kingdom and all that's because of sin so then we we see that repentance god forgives him and he will forgive us folks if we confess and so we come down to verse 15 through 21 and we see david there uh, nathan departed into his house and the lord struck the child that uriah's wife bare unto david and it was very sick David therefore besought God for the child, and David fasted and went in and lay all night upon the earth. And the elders of his house arose and went to him to raise him up from the earth, and he would not, neither did he eat bread with them. And it came to pass on the seventh day that the child died. And the servants of David feared to tell him that the child was dead, for they said, Behold, while the child was yet alive, we spake unto him, and he would not hearken unto our voice. How will he then vex himself if we tell him that the child is dead? But when David saw that his servants whispered, David perceived that the child was dead. Therefore David said unto his servants, Is the child dead? And they said, He is. Then David arose from the earth and washed and anointed himself, changed his apparel, and came to the house of the Lord and worshipped. And he came to his own house, and when he required, uh, and when he required, they set bread before him, and he did eat. Then said his servants unto him, What thing is this that thou hast done? Thou didst fast and weep for the child while it was alive. But when the child was dead, thou didst rise and eat bread. And I love verse 22. And he said, While the child was yet alive, I fasted and wept. For I said, Who can tell whether God will be gracious to me that the child may live? But now he is dead. Wherefore should I fast? Can I bring him back again? I love this. I shall go to him. But he shall not return to me. He still found hope even in that devastating moment. I can't call this child back. God has taken him. But praise God, we'll see our loved ones again. And that little child was innocent, and he knew, David knew he's with the Lord. And David also knew, even though he had sinned greatly, he knew that he was going to be with the Lord one day because um, of the promise of God, that he's not going to let anyone go that believes upon him. And so there's hope in the darkness there is what I titled that in verse 22 and 23. Even in the darkest moments, there's still hope. And so verse 24, David comforted Bathsheba's wife and went in unto her and lay with her, and she bare a son, called his name Solomon, and the Lord loved him. Of course, we know where that story is headed because that son would be the next king. And that son would be the one that was allowed to build that beautiful temple. And David labored and stored up treasures. And so even in the darkness, we see light. Even in the darkness, there was hope. I'll see my child again. And God gave him another son. Let's pray. Lord, thank you for the life of David. Thank you for these scriptures. Lord, we uh, just reassured once again how true your word is as we see the one of the greatest Bible heroes more written about David than anyone besides Jesus Christ himself. And yet, Lord, you throw the covers back and you show us the gory details of a very wicked sin that David committed. And Lord, how you dealt with him. And it's a terrible, terrible thing that sin does. And Lord, I, I thank you for truth. 
And Lord, we can learn from David's mistake. We can learn from David's sin. We can learn that we need to confess our sins. We can learn that there are consequences to sin. And Lord, I pray that you'll take these uh, scriptures tonight as we study David. Lord, make them a blessing and a lesson for all of us. In Jesus' name, amen. All right. Do we have a little bit of bread left? Okay, we do have a little bit of bread. So if anybody would like some, we've got some. Take it with you. It's not nearly as much as last week, but there is some. Uh, Sunday, looking forward to uh, getting back to the book of Romans. Uh, we finished up family month. We'll get back. We were in that series. We'll just pick back up where we left off. So looking forward to that. And uh, we're supposed to be baptizing this Sunday. So another young person uh, going to be baptized. How exciting is that? And so uh, excited about that. Is there anything else that I need? Any announcement? Good to see. Look who's with us here. All the way from South Carolina. Praise the Lord. That's good. Yes, the Lord lifted her up. She is doing great, looks great. And we've been getting regular re reports from Brother, Brother Dwayne. And so praise the Lord you're here with us. That's just a testimony of praise right there. Amen. So that is awesome. That's a good way to dismiss. Amen. God bless you.